Incorporating a trauma-informed response when our child presents with a challenging behavior may feel like an overwhelming undertaking. Today, we'll be going through a series of questions to help us apply a trauma-informed model called trust-based relational interventions. Trust-based relational interventions was a model developed by Karen Purvis. Now, this model is specifically designed for children who come from hard places, but its principles can be applied with all children. So we'll be looking at the three principles, connecting, empowering, and correcting. The connecting principle addresses the emotional needs of a child, while the empowering principle addresses the ecological, physical, and environmental needs of the child. Lastly, our connection principle addresses the behavioral issues of the child. So let's start with the connection principle. We want to look for the why behind the behavior. Just as we look for the need behind an infant's cry, whether they need to be fed, cleaned, or comforted, we want to be curious about the why behind the behavior. So this is where we will incorporate our first strategy called the strategy of awareness. Now, it's gonna be the awareness of the child's history, the child's current state, and how that history may be affecting their current state. So keeping in mind the need behind the behavior, let's continue to explore that why through the next few questions. First, we're going to look towards ourselves. Am I aware of how my own mental or emotional state may be affecting the situation? Maybe work has been stressful. Maybe this is the seventh episode of the day. Maybe you're just tired and frustrated. Keeping in mind how you are feeling and how that could affect how you approach the situation or the child is a really important aspect we want to keep in mind. This is where the age-old analogy of the oxygen mask is applicable. When in an aircraft, they instruct the caregiver to put the oxygen mask on themselves first before the child. We want to apply the same principle when addressing our child's emotional and mental needs. Proactively putting on our own oxygen mask looks like us tending to our own emotional and mental needs using self-care. After checking our connection with ourselves, the next thing we want to check is our connection to the child. Do I feel connected to them and do they feel connected to me? If not, here's where we will implement our engagement strategies. The engagement strategies include eye contact, healthy touch, voice tone, playful interaction, and behavior matching. Now that we've gone through some connecting strategies, let's move on to the empowerment principle. In this principle, we're going to be asking, am I regulated and are they regulated? Here, we will be applying empowering strategies if they are not regulated. The first we'll look at is hydration and nutrition. We know that our children need a high protein snack and water every two hours to help with their cognitive functioning, regulate blood sugar, as well as decrease those behavioral issues that they face. Next, we'll be looking at sensory issues. Have they had a sensory break in the past two hours? Oftentimes, our children who come from hard places can either have overdeveloped senses or underdeveloped senses. By implementing sensory breaks and asking, do they need proprioceptive or vestibular input, we can help them by engaging them in, in strategies such as jumping on a trampoline, going for a walk, or dancing to help get the input or the output that they need. Next, we'll be looking at sleep. Without sleep, the mental and physical and emotion str emotional struggles that our children face will increase while their ability to regulate will decrease. So now that we've looked at the why behind the behavior, let's continue towards our next principle, which is correcting. This correcting principle is gonna be asking a question of, am I providing enough structure to address the situation at hand? Dr. Karen Purvis encourages us to come alongside the child, asserting that although the behavior is not okay, their worthiness and value is not connected to it. Here we'll be asking ourselves, have I helped them to identify how they are feeling as well as strategies to help them in this moment? Have we implemented ourselves the ideal response? And the ideal response is responding immediately, directly, effectively, action-based, and leveled at behavior. 
Have we implemented choices, compromises, or redos? And it's important too to keep in mind that overcorrection may lead to a loss of connection. When we model connecting after correcting with our child, we are also modeling the way that God seeks to connect with us when we present Him with a challenging behavior. Romans 8.39 says that neither height nor depth nor anything in all of creation can separate us from the love of God that is found in Christ Jesus. So I encourage you to use this verse and use these principles the next time you are approached with a challenging behavior.